All right. Thank you for tuning in to another episode. Rocking with you here on a Wednesday. A lot of stuff to discuss. Let's go ahead and get into it. So, um, <laughs> you know, I, I, I'm kind of tired of talking about the Deshaun Watson thing, but that is the number one story. The NFL is appealing Deshaun Watson's six game uh, suspension, right? And a lot of the uh, talk around it is the source told ESPN that the league is appealing for an indefinite suspension for a minimum of one year, a monetary fine and treatment that the star QB must undergo. Uh, I, I always said that this was what was going to happen. The process is convoluted. Um, it doesn't really make sense to a lot of people that how could the NFL appeal the um, decision um, to themselves. But that's the process that the NFL Players Union has agreed to. It's the worst union in sports by far and away. Um, the franchise tag, you know, has completely killed any opportunity for players movement, for players to control their own destiny. Uh, you know, non-guaranteed contracts, uh, you name it. It's just, it's the by far the most feckless, you know, lack of basic competence <laughs> is in the NFL players union and they keep voting the same people in. So you can't really feel bad for them, you know, as far as the players go, as far as whether you feel like the Ezekiel Elliott thing, like I mentioned before, um, where the own LFL's investigator said that I do not believe that she's credible. She's changed her story multiple times. Um, you know, this is one of those rare incidents where I think that, it's obviously not credible. The NFL still suspended him six games. Um, and I think I bring that up to say that I think what happened with the Ray Rice situation is that the NFL took so much flack and caught so much heat. They're never going to be standing fat footed when it comes to women's issues of domestic uh, abuse or sexual abuse again. They're just never going to be standing flat footed when it comes to that. So I think Roger Goodell took a lot of flack personally. If you look at Roger Goodell's story, his dad was actually like a district, a famous uh, district uh, judge, U.S. Circuit judge, I believe. So, you know, the family pedigree, you know, the name of the family was a name before Roger Goodell. So, like, you know, you know, you can disagree, agree, and disagree on what the owners do, and that's old boy money and. You know, a lot of the old boy money has a lot of the old boy excuses. But this right here, he's not going to let this tarnish him. If you get accused of this and there's credible allegations, he's going to he's going to hit you. Now, you can say, hey, uh, Robert Kraft, you can bring up, you know, other owners who've got in trouble. He's not going to punish his bosses. He can't punish his bosses. If he did, they would fire him and they would get someone else in there who knows their role. So that's the way that he's going to approach it. It just is what it is. So like, I don't really know if there's any more meat on the bone here. The only thing that I saw was interesting that the NFL said that there's two options. They're kind of throwing two options to uh, Deshaun Watson and the Brown. They're saying, Hey, either it's an indefinite suspension for one year, you do not pay a fine um, and you go seek treatment or it's, a, a, a suspension of 12 games, you still seek treatment you, and you pay a massive $10, $9 million fine. And um, it seems like Deshaun Watson's camp is saying it's all or nothing. We're not taking anything. So I think this probably leads to them probably signing Cam Newton. He's not going to play this year. It's just... The NFL, you can't be indignant with them. They have all the power. It just is what it is. This is, what the, is the business that you signed up for. So they have all the power. They have all the leverage. There's nothing that you can do. You just have to play by their rules. Whether you think it's fair or not, whether you stand with it or not, that's just what it is. So, um, and once again, it's not going to change. The NFL Players Union is the worst, especially now where there's millions of dollars at stake, people are not going to think long-term about what's best for 
the players and what's best for the future. Majority of the players, when it comes to votes, are just going to vote to have it continue so they can get paid. Right? So it's gonna it's it's kind of hard to change. You can't change it right now. There's just too many things moving the ship down one way. Uh, so it is what it is when it comes to that. Um, let's see here. Uh, I wanted to talk about this Live Golf. So they filed an antitrust lawsuit. Um, they filed an antitrust lawsuit against the PGA from blocking them in playing in games. So they're trying to get the money and then still keep in the PGA Tour. And that's, I mean, <laughs> I got to tip my cap. Uh, so... <laughs> So, you know, the thing is, they're they're suing on antitrust legislation, uh, uncompetitive actions in business. It is antitrust. It is a trust. What they're doing is they're colluding with majors to try to squelch a competitor. That's what they're doing. So um, from everything I read, they have a good shot of overturning this and being able to have their cake and eat it, too. And if that happens, then it's over. You've already seen uh, the former president of this country have an event at his golf course and say that the players who didn't take the money are stupid because eventually they're going to get their way. So if he gets them back in power and, you know, it's a less than laughable um, <laughs> chance that that happens, I mean, it's definitely going to go through. They're definitely going to file some antitrust things against the PGA Tour. Uh, so... It's an interesting conundrum at the end because if the PGA Tour lets them in, then you're going to have more and more people defect. And then the PGA Tour is not going to assist, exist anymore. It's just going to be the majors. So it's just an interesting business um, conundrum. And I'm interested to see how the PGA, the PGA handles this. Because, hey, you have Tiger Woods staying low, but Tiger Woods is, is aging out the game. Right? This isn't... 15 years ago right so like when he stops playing what are you left with my man Vince Scully passed away um you know veteran uh you know rest in peace to him and prayers to his family football season I'm seeing a lot of football fights a lot of football fights you know because the preseason is shorter, your chance to uh, to get out your energy versus other teams just isn't there. So um, what they have been doing is leading, having joint practices, which the teams are wanting to, you know, run their plays and things of that nature more because, uh, you know, you don't have to worry about film and all that other stuff. So that's been taking hold more than these games. So the joint practices, I'm interested to see. But um, like you said, it's injury season as well. Torn ACL, torn ACL place on injury reserve, place on uh, pup, place on this, place on that. The NFL is just a grinding game, man. It just grinds on you. Um, but, yeah, I think um, just back to the Browns real quickly, I think they're probably going to have to sign Cam Newton if he's going to be suspended for the rest of the year. Uh, Robbie Anderson kind of mentioned this in his press conference that Cam could be at a camp now if he wanted to, but he wants to be in a situation where the situation is right. And I think a situation like the Browns, when the quarterback's going to be suspended for the year, when you know you're better than Jacoby Brissett, um, so that gives you a year of runway of starting. That probably might be the best position for him. And for the Browns, they have to get the best quarterback available. I don't think they're going to want to take on Jimmy Garoppolo Saturday, but they have to get the best quarterback available because this is a Super Bowl roster. So can... You know, you might say, hey, is Cam Newton good enough to lead them to a Super Bowl? But Nick Foles is good enough to lead the Eagles to a Super Bowl. If the team surrounding them is good enough, you know, rising tide lifts all boats. So we'll see what happens to that. Uh, Jerry Jones said that he wasn't interested in getting another receiver. I, I mean, I don't it, – it's crazy. Again, I mentioned the thing, life comes at you fast. You go from having the deepest receiving core in football with Colt Cooper, you had CeeDee Lamb, you had Gallup, you had Cedric Wilson, to – you know, just lamb gallop off of the ACL turn <laughs> surgery and nothing else. So I mean it 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 comes at you fast, bro. 
Uh, you know, the two uh dolphin situations what I see right here. I need to start zooming in on this. Two would think I think the dolphins are all in with me and the guys we have now. You know, it's obvious that they wanted to replace him with Tom Brady last year. Um, it's obvious that they wanted Joe Burrow the year before or the year that they drafted him. I don't think he's good enough. Uh, just watching him in the NFL, he's just small. Uh, he is an accurate quarterback, but he has to be play out of, you know, clean pockets, anything that's off level. He misses throws. Uh, he's not athletic. Um, and then again, as I mentioned in the Niners preview, uh, the Shanahan system, it does give you a lot of open throws, but quarterbacks have historically struggled their first year or two in the system because of the amount of times you have to turn your back to the offense and the boot actions and the play actions. A lot of quarterbacks don't feel comfortable for that. Ben Mothersberger, uh, what might be the, you know, the peak of that where he didn't like running play action. So they didn't, they never ran it because he doesn't like turning his back to the defense. You know, you might say, Oh, what is the big deal? But you completely turn your back to the defense, plant your foot in the ground, turn around and throw. Like you don't know what you saw pre-snap might've changed don't you. And for some quarterbacks, you just feel completely uncomfortable to do that. So, um, Hey, if they have a dominant, dominant role game, uh, run game, maybe they carry him to it, but uh, I don't see it. I don't see it. So uh, I'm just going to go ahead and leave it there. Uh, I have some other videos that are coming out today. So bear with me and try to speed up the process of production in this. So uh, we got some stuff coming out today, but uh, keep rocking with me. Thank you. Subscribe, leave a comment, um, share it with a friend, uh, get some word of mouth going on with the pod. You know, we've had a, a lot of, um subs added i had uh shout out to my man uh, ct again um but uh other than his subscribers i had 200 more subscribers that weren't his um you know the college football video did very well look out for some college football content more consistently as well and game of thrones and other things you know just to add um content and you know it's a buffet you know if you don't like this get that and you know, get this and get that. I was just talking with my brother the other day. There was a time in my life where I thought Hometown Buffet was just, you might as well gave Hometown Buffet three Michelin star. I thought it was like, and the last time I went in there, like it has to be over a decade ago. I looked at the food, man. It looked inedible. I'm from the trenches. If I need to do it, I'll do it. But uh <laughs> I'm more of, if I have a buffet, like a Las Vegas buffet, one of my friends actually, she shamed me into going to Vegas and eating that buffet. So she should be ashamed of herself. But uh, all right, I'm gonna leave it there. The game's a game. All right, thank you for watching this clip. Do me a favor, push the button, hit subscribe. Come on, man, push it. Push the goddamn button. Push the goddamn button. You heard what she said. And do what's right. You heard her. Push the button. The game is a game. So what's up, man? What's up with you otherwise, you know? Uh, the game is a game.